Welcome to Retro Upgrade. This time we'll be looking at the GBSC again. This time from a perspective of testing the quality out from this thing on a lot of consoles. I'll be testing almost all my consoles except the ones I'm missing cables for. I'll go over the list in a while. For the test setup I'm using the GBSC as the main scaler of course. But I'm using for all composite video inputs I'm using this uh, little thing that's a composite to VGA converter turns out it's not great but it has its uses and it has very low latency and then it goes from the scaler to a capture card that makes it a lag a little bit for myself but that's fine and then after this uh, you have uh, the input to my screen so I can play the games Okay, down to the exclusions. I excluded the PlayStation 1 and 2 because I don't have RGB cables for these consoles. They do exist, but I don't have them, so I'll be doing a separate video for that. The Xbox 360, because it has VGA out, and uh, the quality is quite nice, but the upscaler can't sync to sources higher than 800 by 600. It should be able to, but mine doesn't work, so I'm going to look into that later. And that's all for the exclusions. Now a word for our sponsor, PCBWay. I'll be using them quite a lot in the near future. They have excellent projects in the project page. Go visit them at PCBWay.com. They have everything you need to start your new project and get going quickly. Uh, I'm going to be using them to make my own RGB board for this ZX Spectrum. I found one at the flea market that this will be an excellent project for this. Now back to the video. Okay, so we'll start out with the NES. Holy crap, the image is really bad. But what can you do? It's composite. The NES only has composites as standard. There are a few mod chips, but they're really expensive, 150 euros or so installed. Uh, there are special versions of the NES chip video card that can be used that output RGB but they are quite rare as well so let's take a look at this this is using the small upscaler box unfortunately it stretches the image and the, there's no way to turn this off after fiddling around with the settings a while I noticed that it only can output up to 800 by 600 it doesn't support anything else and uh, you have to fiddle around with the contrast and brightness and the hue because at otherwise you w will get an oversaturated image and it will actually be unplayable. It has very little lag and it's quite impressive. But uh, as you can see here, I'm playing around with colors and stuff and it's kind of dark when you get it right. But it is fully playable. So a win, I guess. I am testing out a few games here. This is Super Mario Bros. 3, not too bad. Uh, colors are decent, I would say, uh, not too bad. Uh, the upscaler does a good job of taking the 800 by 600 image and upscaling it to 1080p, but unfortunately it is stretched. Uh, ignore the slowdown in the video. Uh, this is because my copy of Mario Bros. 3 is a NTSC version. I'm using a PAL console. This is a original uh, game I have myself. Uh, this is a PAL video game, so the sound should be fine and uh, a quick speed. This is one of my favorite games. I have it boxed actually. <laughs> this is Blaster Master, and it showcases what the shimmering is, uh, the, the problem with composite. So the frames bleed through from the last frame so you see the grass is shimmering on the bottom and uh, it's kind of blurry on other consoles you will see the difference between RGB and SCART like for now we'll be testing the Super Nintendo this has both composite and RGB I split out down the image on the middle as you can see the left image is stretched out and the right one is uh, 4x3, like it should be. Uh, the colors are extremely... or the colors are very, very vibrant on the right side, as you can see there. But uh, it's 
kind of hard to compare really because the other ones is really really blurry but it's stretched out as well I tried to sync up the video as good as I could but obviously playing by hand uh, manually you can't really do the same actions twice you need an emulator for that a and if you see some screen tearing it's just a capture card that doesn't happen on real hardware like the TV or stuff it's ju just when you're recording it this is the composite video only and it looks decent I could play through the game like this but you're missing quite a bit of detail it's still playable but uh, it's really the worst way you can play it on a Super Nintendo because you have native RGB in this card cable uh, I'll be going through on how to make SCART cables for the Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 and GameCube. The Nintendo 64 requires a mod, mod obviously because it doesn't have native RGB. But as you can see this is really 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 sharp. Now for an N64. The N64 has uh, no native RGB. You need a special chip to do this and it's really expensive. So I'll be looking into making my own uh, converter from the NAS chip inside to RGB. They do exist, but they're so expensive, uh, it's not really an option, a hundred and something euros. This looks decent on a big screen, actually. It's uh, just a little dark. You could adjust the uh, brightness, I guess. But... Uh, if you play this on a CRT, it's fine, but if you're using composites uh, nowadays, it looks blurry and not good at all. Uh, I am going to do a small interlude here and uh, fix one of my cables. This is the cable I used for the Super Nintendo. It didn't work on my GameCube and I noticed that it's sync on Luma. I made this change a while back. Uh, trying to chase better gr uh, visuals from the cable because it was having problems syncing. This is a pre-made cable I bought from AliExpress. You can see the fin cable it has. It's really crappy. Uh, if you're going to use these cables you m probably need to modify them. So I ended up using a screwdriver here because I glued it back together when I put it back together. This is a multi-out, it's used by the Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64 and GameCube. There's four, uh, three gaming consoles that use the same cable. So the Luma pin is exactly next to the composite pin. So the reason you would use a Luma pin is that it's less distortion in the sync signal. Because the composite or Luma pin is just used for sync when you use RGB cables. Uh, RGB cables uh, transfer the red, green and blue data. You need some flux, some uh, solder and some uh, tweezers and a somewhat steady hand and uh, of course a soldering iron. This is my homemade uh, liquid flux. Uh, I used some pa paste flux and uh, some 99% IPA to make it. It's really handy because it flows in through the joints. So the only thing I need to do here actually is move the yellow wire to the one next to it. I'll show you here in a schematic what I need to do. As you can see we just need to move the cable here. There are different setups for the cable. Uh, one with capacitors, one with resistors, uh, one with you, you need to reference both grounds in the connector. But uh, nothing special really. Uh, th there are different uh, setups you need to do for different cables. I'll be having a series on how to make your own cables very soon. Uh, making very high quality RGB cables instead of buying these pre-made pieces of crap pr practically. Because as you can see there's no shielding, there's no nothing in between the lines. And uh, on the Sega consoles especially you can see the ripple from the power lines uh, bleeding through the v image I'll point it out when it comes time to that 
In the Super Nintendo, actually you couldn't see too much bleed through, but you will get a clearer image if you actually put some shielding. But that's a story for another day when I do the video. Okay, so let's get to this. See, I'm just uh, putting on some solder on the actual pin that's going to receive the wire. So it's the the second pin from the left and it's on the third one so it's it's uh, the second one is composite and the third one is uh, luma or luminance there is something called c-sync and that should be stripped down as well c-sync is a raw dig digital uh, signal and it's about 5 volts and it's too high for a TV normally it, sh it will work a while but it can burn out the connector on your TV so I would advise to use the resistor then the only console I know of is the Sega Mega Drive that has C-Sync ok so let's go over here ok so it's done it's that easy uh, the usually the cable comes this way from the Aliexpress but if you buy a specifically a sync on Luma cable you need to do this mod to make it work on the GameCube because the GameCube is missing the Luma output from the multi out so you don't get any uh, sync signal so it doesn't sync to the upscaler pretty much I'll show the other side uh, now on the SCART cable but first I'm going to glue this shut I'm just going to put a drop on each corner just to be able to open this again just in case if I need to but I'll be making my own cables very soon when I get all the parts from Aliexpress actually it's a lot cheaper to make your own than to actually buy them because you use instead of using crappy cables because the connectors themselves are fine I'm going to be using HDMI cables because they come uh, pre-shielded all the uh, da data lines so you can use those for uh, color uh, R, G and B and then you can use it for the sync signal by itself so all of the main lines are shielded and then you have the audio you can route via some other cable there are 19 connections on a HDMI connector so if you're using a HDMI cable that's fully connected you get a lot of lines to run data through okay time for the SCART cable side this is wrong uh, this is the wrong setup for a Super Nintendo really uh, it's missing the main capacitors for the RGMB or the com uh, or resistors depending on what guide you follow it still works as you can see in the video for the Super Nintendo but there is a chance it can damage the TV so you should actually do the mod correctly there is a resistor for one of the lines there this is to pull uh, one of the lines to ground so we get the 16 by 4 aspect ratio and also to use RGB so this tells the, the TV that it is a RGB in via the SCART so uh, there are different setups you can use uh, S-Video and uh, Composite through SCART as well I'll be, uh, I'll be going through this when I build my own cables exactly what's needed and uh, what but I can show you a diagram here what it should look like here there are a couple of different versions and uh, different the NTSC SCART cable is not the same as the PAL SCART cable so you have to do some different mods to it so I'm just putting this back I was just checking for the resistors because I couldn't remember if it had them or not it did not it still works for my purposes for this video but we'll be looking into this later on there's no shielding whatsoever between the cables so the audio for example can bleed through the color information and give some ripples I'm really lucky it doesn't because the cabling is not good any 4k HDMI cable 
will be a hundred times better than the cable that comes with this as standard okay let's get on to the testing on the gra uh, gamecube this one has rgb out and composite out as you can see the difference is night and day you, you can't really compare them even the gamecube seems to have a really bad composite out and but it does support widescreen so it's a more fair comparison as you can see both are wide the videos but the comp composite is really 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 dark the gamecube also had uh, digital out some of the early versions i don't have the cable it's super expensive it's like 200 euros so the, uh, the rgb is your cheapest bet and you actually get decent uh, video quality uh, on the left it looks like there is nothing but it's actually so dark you can't see the starry sky <laughs> that's pretty much it you can see a small sliver of light pretty much same for the shimmering here you can't actually see it very well but I want to give you the fair image of exactly what it looks like when it comes out from the scaler. As you can see here, it looks pretty decent, otherwise. I paused the video there for a while, just because I thought it was broken. I couldn't see anything. I haven't played through this game. It's called Time Splitters. I heard it's okay, so I'm going to do that in the future. But considering your options, buy a uh, RGB cable for the Super Nintendo and use it for your GameCube. There's no reason why not, because it looks amazing. You can get better image, like I said, with the uh, digital RGB cables, but they're so expensive, it's not really an option. And you have to have an early GameCube to have the port. Either. Okay, let's get on with the testing. Next up, the Wii. So here, there is a little bit of a um, caveat. When you're using the component cables, you have to switch to EDTV mode. Otherwise, it looks like shit, even through component video. So I'm using component cables because I have them. There should be a RGB version as well of the cables. But why use RGB when you have components? It's the same thing practically. You get a little higher resolutions from, RGB, uh, from the component cables. Component has sync on green normally. So you can see it the composite is dark as usual. But uh, it's it's decent on the Wii. It has actually has good compo uh, com composite out. The component out is obviously a lot better and a lot clearer and sharper. And the image is a little bigger as well. As you can see there, there's a discrepancy in sides. So it actually stretches the image to the entire window. See the black borders around? This is uh, the game from the Cars, the movie. It's not very good, but it's what I had in the memory card <laughs> at the time <laughs> when I picked out the Wii we from uh, storage this video took forever to make because i had to dig out all the power supplies for all the consoles find all the cabling it was a pain in the ass okay so the quality of the output at least is really nice i can't really complain for some reason it loads faster when using composite and i really don't know why or or sorry uh, uh, yeah composite yeah no yeah composite and the uh, component video takes longer to load in the game i don't know why that is uh, probably more texture detail i guess is loaded in or something something in the background at least but the sharpness you get is not even comparable and the the game runs battery smooth really I took a little bit of... You, you can see some uh, frame 
uh, let's say shredding or uh, it it's like it splits the frame in two, but that's just the, ups uh, the, uh, the the recorder for the PC. It's not actually the upscaler. It's not visible if you play on a TV, for example. Next, we have the Master System. I'm playing some Indiana Jones here. It's a really crappy game. Do, if you see the horizontal bars all over the screen, this is due to the cable. This is a RGB cable for this console. I don't have a RC uh, composite cable for the Sega Master System. But either way, RGB is the best way to play these games. So get an RGB cable. I will never uh, recommend composite over RGB. So the game is playable, obviously, and it's quite sharp. It's a little blurry, but don't forget this is a first generation console, f like this Nintendo 8-bit. But uh, it looks okay. Uh, I will, like I said, I will be making a video series where I make my own cables and I can see if I can mitigate the horizontal barring or gel barring you see here. I'm using the same cables for the Mega Drive as well. This is just the inbuilt game for the Master System. I'm just uh, starting it without a game inside. If you wait long enough here, you either get Alex the Kid as a game or you get Snail Maze. I'm unlucky because I get Snail Maze. I don't have uh, the version with Alex the Kid in because Alex the Kid is a lot better game. So th this is just a snare game. We'll speed through this. On to the Mega Drive. Okay, this time we'll be looking at a few games here. You can see the horizontal bars are still there because I'm using the same cable. So this is probably picking up noise from the power rail. It, it delivers five volts through the RGB SCART cable. And this is probably wh what it's picking up. Or it could be inside the console, but considering it's the same for the Master System and the Sega Mega Drive, uh, it's usually the cable instead. I'll be looking into how to fix this. Okay, so this game, I suck at it, but it's it was fun at least a little while. Let's try Columns. This is a multi-cart, uh, official one from Sega, by the way. And Columns is practically Tetris. The de it's decent in RGB. Uh, composite uh, is available on the Sega Mega Drive as well as uh, S-Video, but I don't have the cables for it. But RGB is the best way to play it. There are special cables uh, available on AliExpress that do work, but you ha get crappy quality cables I would recommend making your own because the connector is really easy to get a hold of okay some more footage here I'm going to play a little more graphically intense game not that this is uh, ultra high graphics or so but it's a cool game cool spot uh, died with the times uh, not really <laughs> used seen or used anymore uh, ignore the co uh, strange colors i was pushing in and out the connector it didn't really go in because they used the wrong socket but th this is part of the problem with rgb you have to have good cables to get good quality and it's really hard to find cheap good cables if you're looking for really good quality cables here are some but as you can see they are super expensive uh, for what they are so I would recommend just building your own but of course it's up to you if you don't want to solder some wires and uh, a, a couple of connectors it's fine I do understand that it's uh, a bit of a hassle but if you want the best quality that's the only way to now on to the Saturn this time we'll be looking at the Sega Saturn. It's one of the better consoles Sega has. Uh, 
It has a really nice RGB output, even through uh, these crappy AliExpress cables. It glitched out there, I don't know why. It's not visible when you use it on the TV, so I'm probably thinking it's the scaler or something. The scaler is performing quite well. Considering the price, it's just about 50 euros. If you're trying to get uh, the same quality, you will have to pay over a hundred for a OSSC or uh, maybe a Frame Meister second hand or so. There are the RetroThink products as well. They are also very good, but they're getting expensive. The new RetroThink 4K is a grand, <laughs> so <laughs> extremely expensive. Okay, so let's look over this. And uh, this is Virtual Fighter, one of the nicer games for the Saturn. It's one of the release titles. I really like this one. It reminds me of the first 3D fighters uh, at home, at least. And it looks good, really sharp, really nice. I would uh, prefer a little bit higher quality output, but I don't know if the Saturn actually can provide it. So that's fine enough. We'll be taking a look on how to improve video quality via mods on many consoles as well. But that's for another video as well. We'll be going through them one at a time. Next up, the Dreamcast. Okay, so here is a problem with me showing you the quality. On the right you have the VGA output from the VGA cable and the composite. I don't have RGB cables for this console and I have an issue. All the games I own do not support the VGA output. That's one of the main issues with this console. It's uh, Some games support the VGA output, 640 by 480 but not all of them. So I have to show you the gameplay for the composite only, but if you, you can see it's really really sharp for the gameplay. So here's the composite only video game. Uh, I think this is Snow Surfers. It's a snowboarding game, nothing special. This one does not support the R VGA and neither does the other game I own. I have to buy more <laughs> Dreamcast games. But uh, yeah, uh, I ha haven't had luck finding them cheaply on uh, the flea market here nearby, so I, I probably have to order some. The bad things living on an island, I guess. Okay, so I'm loading into the game. It looks a little dark. I would tune the colors on the upscaler or the VGA converter or whatever we want to call it. It's still fully playable because it doesn't really lag. But uh, I rather had the VGA or uh, RGB signal from this. I'm going to look into making my own R RGB uh, cable for the uh, Greencast because I can't really find some to, ch to buy. I'd not really sure why. Could be that the actual VGA is the only way to get RGB out from this console. Uh, if you don't, didn't know, VGA is RGB plus horizontal and vertical sync, pretty much. It's the same as uh, RGB. I suck at these games. Sorry for the crappy gameplay. But, uh, what can you do? Thank you for watching until the end. Next time we'll be looking on how to modify a ZX Spectrum to output composite instead of RF. See you on the next one. Bye!